slowly figuring out better and better ways to wear the microphone. Started hanging it off like my hair and shit. And then I was like hanging it just around my shoulder. And now I'm like doing like a necklace sort of thing with it. <sighs> when there's a will, there's a way, right? So I'm in Tanim Sands now, which is the opposite of Yipun in terms of the way that it sounds like a nice place, like Tanim Sands, but it's next to Gladstone, which has been completely pillaged by mining companies, which is really sad and gross. Um, you can actually see like in the distance, just like the silhouettes of all like the massive machinery that's just like wrecking the earth, basically. Um, and the beach is, um, it's got one of those signs that has all the things that can kill you. And there's like eight different things on the sign. <laughs> there's crocs here. There's um, different stingers, like jellyfish type stuff. There's like sharp rocks. There's, I don't know what else. There's like just a board full of like reasons why you shouldn't swim. And it's not a very nice beach anyway. <laughs> it's complain, complain, complain. Um, yeah, people are still loving it though. It's like the most packed beach ever. So obviously maybe I've, I'm looking through the wrong lens. Maybe I'm just um, a little bit tired again, a little bit tired and cranky. Yeah, I was just um, replying to some inquiries and stuff as well. And that's always interesting because um, people don't really know what they want and they will ask all these questions. It's like they're, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. It just wigs me out, man, like people on the internet. Um, and it brings me back to like, this is what I've signed up for. This is what I've got to do now. I've got to, it's a, like all the things I have to deal with all of it because I created all of it. Only the creator can change their creation. Um, yeah, more and more people are starting to get in touch. It's like, I haven't even posted anything anywhere that's saying that I'm remotely close to home or I'm nearly home. But it's like, people just, yeah, I guess it's been a while and they're just assuming that I'm going to show up soon. And it's getting to that time of year where everyone sort of goes home and like gets together and that, so yeah. Oh, I'm tired. Not tired like sleepy. Tired like I've been camping and eating out of an esky and a and a like cereal box full of trail mix for a long time. I think I'm pretty healthy though. It's not that it's not like a malnourished thing. Might be a little bit dehydrated today because I've been. I don't have water on me right now. I just like when I walk on the beach. Like, I just lose all track of time and I just don't care. And I'll walk like for ages, like an hour, two hours, easy. Um, and just like lose myself in that place. It's the most pleasant, um, like meditative thing to me. That and like rock, rock hopping through a familiar forest that where you know all the best, like you know your route and, you don't, and you're not like slipping or like tripping or anything. Or when you're just really tuned in and you're just like flowing with nature. Like, I just love that. I could do that forever. Like, I wish that I could. I wish that you didn't need to sleep and eat and drink water and you could just like wander around in nature forever, <laughs> sometimes. Anything simple. Anything simple and free from responsibility. <laughs> responsibility is what I need to face. I need to be responsible for my life and yeah, you can't just, this, this lifestyle isn't a, a forever lifestyle. I can't do this until I'm 80. It's, I've got to start to put down some kind of roots, some kind of like foundation. <laughs> I'm, it's like I've been like living out, like living like this for ages. I haven't. 
guess it's coming up. Like, I left home in August and I haven't been like in the same place for very long since then. Like I've slept in houses and stuff and I've um, even stayed in hotels and stuff. And yeah, but it's just been nonstop. Like I haven't had my own secure space since the beginning of August or the end of July. Um, so yeah, like half the year I'm gonna end up spending completely like untethered. <laughs> which is, yeah, that's a reasonable amount of time to start to have these kinds of like desires to just like anchor myself back to a home. But I, don't, I have no idea what's gonna happen. And I love that. There's like, yeah, I don't even know what's gonna happen like this week. I don't know what's gonna happen between now and Christmas. Like I've, I'm open to possibility and I've let go of so much of my, my issues and my pain and my past and my reactions to everything in the past. So I should actually be really free, like moving into the next, um, the next experiences, like I'm not going to be bringing a whole heap of shit to the next people that I get like really close with and intimate with and connected to, like friends or romantically or whatever. I'm going to be solid. Yeah. When I first like just said like I'm not doing this anymore and just like jumbled my whole life up. I wish that I didn't do that. Like, I'm sure that I do, that I'm sure about that now. I wish that I didn't just jumble it all up and just like, like, it was chaotic. It wasn't like mature. It was like really abrupt and I just kind of like said, fuck everything. And I just left and I, it was really destructive and um, yeah, it wasn't fair on my partner at the time. Or like, it wasn't fair on anybody. <laughs> it wasn't fair on the people that I came into contact with. Like, yeah, the people that I got involved with. <laughs> Straight after. It was messy and it was yuck. But yeah, like I said, making peace with all of that. That's just like the extra um, icing on the cake. Like there was plenty of issues before I hit the eject button and turned everything to chaos like that that wasn't really as bad as the rest of it like I feel worse about like staying in a situation that was making me resentful and anxious and paranoid and insecure and like all of the ugly manifestations of those things that you know show up when you feel that stuff inside you like, I feel worse about the time that I stayed in my old relationship than I do about how I ended it. I feel like I just had to, like, kind of... Like, that, like I don't know. Kyle Cease says... Like, Kyle Cease is another content creator, conscious creator, that I, I've really enjoyed, and I got a lot out of his content. He's a little bit funny. Um, <laughs> pun intended, because he's a comedian as well as a transformational speaker. But... um yeah, he's a little bit funny, like a little bit crazy um, in a good way. But he says like, he's, like he does this transformational, like comedic content where he's really interactive with the audience and he's always bringing, like if somebody's got an issue, like why don't you like talk about it in front of a thousand people right here, right now. Um, yeah, and he's always like, you did the best that you knew how to do in that moment of time. That was the old you. This is the new you who understands why you don't do all that shit because you've had the experience of doing all that shit. Like, that's how I feel about this. Like, yeah, like, it was messy. Like, I fucked up and I made a mess of my life when I was actually, my objective was to get my shit together. That's what I was set out to do <laughs> at that time. <laughs> um, like, I was doing heaps of, like, healing work and stuff. And then 
yeah, I just did the opposite. Like I, some people might like call it a healing crisis. Like just, yeah, I don't know. That, I feel like that's a cop out if I tried to say that. But yeah, um, only just now being able to really talk about it without just making even this sound really messy and gross. But I want to be honest as well. I want to be like as real as possible, but like with the healthy boundaries so that I'm not just like shooting myself in the foot in front of a live audience. Not that it's a live audience anymore, <laughs> which is one of my favorite things still. What was I actually trying to get to there? I feel like something was trying to emerge and I kind of blocked myself because I was scared. Yeah, it was, it's around like the idea that staying in the relationship was more destructive than like ending it really abruptly and chaotically. Like I feel like it's, it's never pretty a breakup, is it? Like you don't, there's no such thing as like you shake hands and you part ways and like everybody's like, yeah, that was fantastic. Um, yeah, I'm so glad that all of this happened and now it's over. <laughs> yeah, I think it was as tidy as, like it's as tidy as any breakup. I just, yeah, you can't help but feel shitty and, and it's part of it. Like, I don't think there's a breakup in the history of breakups where people haven't had taken a long, hard look at themselves and just like noticed all of the shitty things about the relationship and their part in it. And yeah, I've, that's what I've been doing mostly. <laughs> and like, all, yeah, I just feel there's an extra layer of guilt for like anybody that I got involved with. Um, straight after when I was all messy. You probably, I feel like I shouldn't do that. Like, but like, that's a little bit of a, another pattern that I had as well. Like I was like George of the jungle, like swinging from relationship to relationship. Like I was never single for long. I always had to like have somebody, um, cause it makes me feel secure and it makes me feel, it, it, it actually just prevents me from doing what I just did. Like it keeps me from introspection and contemplation and really looking at myself like I can just lose myself in another fantastic white whirlwind romance of this beautiful person and just like um create this love story and like this whole mythology like I'm really romantic and like I love like just blowing people's minds and like creating something so beautiful like that's the that's the positive that's the pros of who I am um but yeah I've I've never been I've never done this like since for a long time. Like there's always been, I've always been with someone in like, even if it's just shallow, like hook up kind of, but it's, it's consistent. Like there's always been someone in my life that I can rely on to distract me from myself. And yeah, it's been really eye opening to just be alone and actually realize that it's not as scary as I thought to be me and to be alone with myself like really really alone like this like for an extended period of time like I've done Vipassana retreats and um, other kinds of retreats where I've been alone for like 10 days three days or like probably 10 days is the longest and then you get to go home to your beautiful girlfriend and like but you know that that's there and it's like a totally different thing when it's just you and there's nothing and you just got to deal with that like there's no there's no home like there's no there's no cuddle waiting for you there's no love waiting for you you've got to love yourself but yeah the big takeaway is like it's not as scary as you think man you you've got it and you you realize how awesome you are when you actually give yourself space to be you by yourself like i've never known who i am by myself like it's always been like i've always identified as the person in the relationship or as the relationship like I, re I really attach my identity to like the relationship how good is the relationship like how how healthy are we as a team like all that kind of thing so that's what that's another part of getting really solid like i want to be so solid as as an individual um because i don't know, you know like i still i wouldn't say that, that my last relationship had like I was kind of dependent, but I was like every relationship that I've had, I've gotten a little bit better. Like I've improved and I've become, I've just done it better. 
but like every time I get out of a relationship, I look back and I realize like there's so much to learn from it. And I, that's what I'm doing right now. But I've actually given myself the space to learn from my last relationship before I go charging into another one. Although I almost did go charging into another one. Yeah. But like, thankfully I was doing the kind of work that I was doing and I became aware of this pattern that was playing out and I knew that I had to stop it even if that was going to create even more chaos and pain and suffering and it was going to send me into a deeper, bigger tailspin, which is what you've been witnessing. <laughs> yeah. But it hasn't been that bad, has it? Like, yeah, you don't know. <laughs> like, you don't know how, how dark some of the nights have gotten. You don't know, like, but you've seen at least, like, what I have been able to share and being comfortable to share with with like the healthy boundaries and everything so I don't think that it's been that hectic I think I've handled it well I know that another trait another positive trait that I have is like staying very grounded like I can have like fucking volcanoes erupting inside me like cyclones like metaphorically like just everything going on inside me like fucking like the world is ending apocalyptic level fucked up shit inside of me and I can stand there stoic and I can take care of business and I can take care of other people's needs before my own. I can be at that point zero, like I'm good at that. And that's why I'm able to do journals, <laughs> like when I'm like going through this shit as well, because I can like put it all aside. It's not like I'm, I'm suppressing it. I'm not internalizing it. I'm still working through it. But for this moment, I'm just putting it to the side. And if anything gets triggered off while I'm journaling, it's just like I keep that over here off, off camera and I focus on like what I do want to share and like what I think might be valuable for other people. Like, well, I don't really think about that that much. I just have faith that like being real and like sharing real experiences is going to resonate with somebody somewhere. Like someone's going to have some kind of insight. Somebody's going to appreciate it. Even if there's no insight or like great epiphany, it's just nice to sit down with somebody and like be real it like encourage it like brings out the realness in you like when somebody else is real i feel rhyming on the fly i like that yeah so i'm glad that i was finally able to like share a little bit of that because i know like it's the stuff that i don't want to share that is the the real valuable stuff that's really going to land for people i've had people message me saying that I've brought them to tears when I've shared like deeper stuff and some of the stuff that I have shared has been so hectic like but like I'm so glad and a lot of it I've ended up putting on private in the future because I feel like the audience gets bigger and it gets too uncomfortable for me but like the people that did see it I'm glad that they saw it and I'm glad that they drew inspiration from it insights from it or they just felt like they weren't alone because they saw that somebody else was going through that I'm really glad so like things go on private when it gets too intense, but that's okay. Click the like button for me if you enjoyed this journal. Comment down below, I'd love to hear from you. Subscribe if you haven't already and check out the links in the description for all the other ways to do cool things. See you shortly. <laughs>